All right, this next question on linear dependence then just throws an unknown in. And so this question asks, find all values of k for which the following set is linearly independent. All right. And your set of vectors is then 1, 0, 1, k, negative 1, 0, k, 1, 2, 0, 1, 3. All right. And so what are we going to do? Well, like above or in the previous video, we're going to put these guys into column vectors, into a matrix. So we got 1, 0, 1, k, negative 1, 0, k, 1, and then 2, 0, 1, 3. And remember, what do I want to do? I want to row reduce these guys in order to expose the pivots, right? And so you can think of it as reducing into row echelon form, reduce row echelon form, whatever, uh, they all work. So how are we going to do this? Well, uh, let's do it this way. I'm going to take, uh, well, this row of zeros and we'll move it on the bottom. And then we're going to try to zero out these guys, right? We're going to zero out those guys. So I get one, negative one, two, and here comes zero. So this is row, I, so I'm gonna move this last row, right? Row two is on the bottom, all right? And then we're gonna move these two guys up a row. Um, so that's, so those are the steps I'm doing. So I should've done a different color, it's fine. We, okay, there we go. So we move that row zero to the bottom and now we need to zero out the first column besides the first row. And what is this then? You get k minus a negative 1, so this becomes k plus 1. And then you get 1 minus 2, so you get this becomes negative 1. And then uh, in row 3, I get k, well, okay, so you get 0, and then you get k minus, or, okay, so you get 0, you get 1 minus k. And then, or 1 minus a negative k, so you actually get 1 plus k, so that's, 1 plus k or k plus 1 and then you get 3 minus 2k all right and so for those of you guys wondering how I'm doing that right it's just here's k I'm multiplying this row by k and then subtracting these two rows all right so all right now I can zero out this guy right here by simple subtraction of two rows and get one, negative one, two, zero, k plus one, negative one, zero, zero, and then this becomes four minus two k. And then of course I got a row of zeros on the bottom. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to have three pivots, right? We need to have three pivots. So what values of k make it so that I don't have three pivots? Well. It happens when this guy is zero or this guy is zero, all right? And what are those then? If k equals negative one, then I have two pivots, i.e. the rank is two. And if k equals two, then the same thing applies, right? Then this last entry in the last row is zero and then I only have two pivots, which means my rank is two. So you need to have the same number of pivots or the rank of your matrix has to equal the number of columns, all right? The rank of your matrix must equal the number of columns or the number of pivots are the same. And so if these, if k equals one or k equals two, that doesn't happen. So k cannot equal negative one or two. And if k is anything but those two numbers, then these three vectors are linearly independent. All right. So remember, when you're row reducing, uh, independence then means that the rank of the matrix that you're re reducing, uh, of matrix reducing that you're reducing. needs to equal the number of vectors you're given, all right? Or this is the number of columns. 
in the matrix or uh, the number of pivots is equal to this number of columns in the matrix. All right, so this actually shows us that rank is actually equal to the number of pivots in a matrix. That's pretty much given. We, we You should have learned that by this point. So yeah, uh, that's how you determine then if an unknown value, like what an unknown value can take on in order for a matrix to be linearly independent or, or a set of vectors to be linearly independent. All right.